everybody. Welcome back to our yurt, our yom, sweet yom. I do firmly believe there are places on this earth, muddied as it is with our materialism, conflict, and greed, where we can cross the line into that other world, that parallel universe of grace and joy. second of it, as you well know. I am sitting here today by our wood stove. It's not on. Oh, it's a little warm yet. Um, I haven't, my husband loaded it this morning and then he left and I haven't loaded it again because it's going to get close to 45, between 45 and 50. So I'm letting it die down so I can take out the ashes and get it all cleaned up for a fire tonight. So in a yurt, you just have to podcast wherever the lighting is not casting shadows all over your face. And so this happens to be the spot today. I thought maybe I should explain that because every time I, I record, I seem to be in a different area of the yurt, but with the lighting, I just have to work with, I just have to work with the yurt. So yes, I'm right here. This is our wood burning stove. You can see our TV right here. Our sofa is there. And so this is our main living area. This is where we hang out all the time. And now we get to hang out here together. So welcome to our yurt. Our, I wish um, I could have a little fire going for us, but it's just a little bit too warm. Um, but oh my goodness, have we had some cold weather. Let me just stop right here before I get into the weather and say, if this is your first time viewing, welcome. My name is Joyce and we live up in the Great Smoky Mountains in a yurt and it's just me and my husband. Um, we've been here for two years and this is just a lifestyle podcast and a crofting podcast. You get a little bit of yurty, you get a little bit of crofty. So it's just whatever comes to my mind basically whenever we meet together. So I hope you'll just grab yourself a cup of my cuppa of the day is um, iced coffee. I made, um, I just poured cold brew coffee in here and added, uh, I think what, what, I added peppermint mocha today because hot flash, you know, menopause. And I just, I thought peppermint mocha sounded cold. So I guess it's the peppermint, the cool breezy uh, vibe that peppermint gives me, but so mine is iced coffee with peppermint mocha uh, creamer in it. 
and uh, typically I have a hot drink, but I just couldn't do it today. So the sun is shining today. Well, it was, it looks a little overcast right now, but the sun is shining today and um, the snow, whoa, got a hair in my, uh. okay. So uh, the snow is, it's really weird because I can look over on, so we live on this mountain and then there's a deep valley and then there's another mountain and that mountain over there, all the snow is melted because that's south facing. Ours is north facing. So we still have snow and um, I'm excited. I'm going to go for a walk and just see if it's off of the roads um, and just curious. And, um, but it is not off of our lane and um, it's still in our backyard and it'll probably be here for a while because it's, it's, it's just the sun doesn't really hit on this side. But I'm perfectly okay with that because I love snow and it doesn't look like there's any more in the next couple of weeks. Well, the 10-day forecast, if you can trust that, there's no snow coming. Plus, I'm leaving for Charlotte to go and stay for a week with my mom and my daughters and our grandies and my sisters. And so I'm hoping I see my sisters. I'm only going to be there for a week. So sometimes the scheduling doesn't work out, but I miss them so much. So I'm hoping that we get to see each other. And um, yeah, a week of relaxing and just laughing with those grandies. They're getting so big. Oh my gosh. So I'm so excited about that. What have I been doing? Um, we have done nothing to the yurt. It has been, like I said, cold. And so no work gets done when it's cold. I mean, I've, I've organized and which is a daily thing for me. I'm always reworking and reorganizing because you know, it's such a small space, but, um, there's been no big projects going on. He does have an extender to the, um, chimney. And I think he's going to try and put that on this evening. Um, once everything is cooled down, we've got to get this nice and cool. So hopefully tonight that gets put on. Um, we're thinking, or he's thinking if we, he just adds that other 18 inches, I think it might just give us a little better draw. Um, sometimes when we open the, the door, uh, it gets smoky. It, it smoke rolls out. And, um, so we're hoping that will help with that. I don't know, but that's all that we have going on as far as projects, because you can't be outside working in the year in, in this cold weather and every, every project, like if we did work to the kitchen, we'd have to do the work outside, like saw and all that stuff and bring it in here. And it's just not the time of the year for that. So this is the time of the year where it's just nice, slow living, where we can just kick back. We watch Netflix. We have watched movies, football, um, just very relaxed. And of course, all the crafting. I have been doing some walking. I absolutely love walking in the snow. I layer up, I put wool on, um, so that I don't get cold at all. Um, I love, I think I put this on Instagram. I love having a treasure trove of woolens that I can go pick from Every morning when I wake up, it's like, oh, what am I going to wear today? Because I just love woolens. I love handmaids. And sometimes when the weather is warmer, it's not as easy to, to wear sweaters, like especially when you, you have hot flashes. But so today, this is what I'm wearing. It's the Andrea Mowry sweater. Um, and what is this? The nurtured sweater. So it's cropped. I have it on with a denim dress and I would, of course, handmade socks, but my body isn't, my legs are not going to come up that far. So you just have to trust me on that one. And, uh, but I love just pulling out and, um, or hats or mittens, scarves, shawls. Oh, I love that. So winter weather is, is my, you know, you have spirit animals. That will be my spirit season. I just love walking in the snow and I love walking in all seasons, to be honest with you. Um, but I just love, there's just something about the snow and this, the serenity and the 
the pureness and and up here there's no traffic so the weather the the snow doesn't get slushy and muddy and yellowed and dirty you know it's just it's just pretty it's just pretty so i love i've i've been going out foraging um trying to find pine cones to um use as starters we have we have wood kindling but I don't know. There's just something about using the natural. So I've been trying to forage pine cones. However, whatever kind of pine cone, pine tree we have up here, those pine cones are cemented. I mean, as serious, it's like they are cemented to the trees, the, the branches, because I try to pull them and I seriously hurt my hands and I just have to give up. But I have been out just looking and foraging the, the forest ground and, um, looking for snow looking for uh pine cones I, i've got some footage that i can put in here of me taking my walk down to this one little area and i just love going i just love i love here's what i love i love what i call um looking for mushrooms and here's what i mean todd and i were on a hike this summer and uh, we were hiking these trails and they would branch down into waterfalls. And we were, and I was, I mean, my eyes were peeled. My eyes are always peeled for, for something unique, something pretty, a pretty rock, a heart-shaped rock, um, just anything. And um, I, we had walked down this path to go look at a waterfall and we were coming back up and there was an, a couple there and she was taking a photograph of something tucked back in the mountain. And Todd, you know, just walks back, walks on by like, you know, well, that's not our business. Just, and I'm like, I got to find out what she's taking a photograph of. And it was the prettiest mushroom tucked back into the woods or back into the, the side of the mountain. And, um, oh my gosh my heart like stopped. It was so gorgeous. And I just could not believe that I had just walked down that path and had missed it. I had just walked right by it. I was looking for the big waterfall. I was looking for that big, shiny, you know, that big, impressive waterfall. And that's great. I love looking for the waterfalls. But my lesson in that day was, oh gosh, always look for the mushrooms. Those little hidden gems that are just tucked in here and there. And they're just little pockets of I love you. I mean, it's just so now when I go for walks, I'm always looking for the mushroom. It may not be a mushroom per se. It could be, it could just be a beautiful plant that's tucked back in somewhere. It could be a, a rock that's just gorgeous. It, who knows what it could be? But acorns, pine cones, whatever. But I always want to be looking for the mushroom because I, you know, I don't want to always be looking for the big and the flashy and the better and the, the, the mind blowing. Sometimes I just want to, sometimes just that little is better. Kind of like um, your life. You know, we had the big house. We had the, the 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 suburbia neighborhood that was eclectic. And, you know, that was all wonderful. We loved that. And as much joy as that brought us, our little mushroom cottage here, it's tapped into something that we would have never known. So, I've got so many lessons that I've been, that I'm being taught on the, keep looking for the mushrooms. Just keep looking for that. You know, big is great. And if that's your thing, you do you. But for me, at this season of my life, and who knows where I'll be in five years, but for this season of my life, I'm just all tucked in here looking for the mushrooms. So all of my walking, all of my days out, every time I look, you know, my word for the year is no regrets. And I don't, 
how many times I've thought maybe it should be smile because I catch myself smiling every time I look out a window and look over and look out and just see layers upon layers upon layers of mountains. Or I'm walking and I just look out and see a whole different, I mean, just, I'm always catching myself smiling at nature and, but that's, you know, I, I there's a lesson to be learned with no regrets too. So that I am, I'm sure of, but yeah, so I've been out looking for the mushrooms on my walks and just having the best of time, not finding pine cones. I guess they drop. I need to Google and see when they drop, but, um, these trees up here, the pine cones have not dropped. I don't know why, but they haven't. And they haven't dropped. I've been, I've been trying to get them off the trees since like October. So all this quarter, this last quarter, they have not, they have not dropped, but yeah, so that's what I'm doing. I've been busy knitting, crocheting, reading, faffing the yurt, putzing around the yurt, and looking for mushrooms out on my walk. Are we ready to get to crafting? Crofting? Funny thing, I say croft. It, and those of you who've watched for a long amount of time know I say craft because I think it sounds better than craft. I feel like, I feel like craft is something that, uh, my grandma Ruby did and it wasn't always, um, it wasn't always the prettiest, although she was very talented in her, her crafting. I, I would, I'll say this. She had crafts and she had crofts and her crafting was superb, but her crafting so that's what I think of when I think of craft. Croft, I say, because someone told me in the southern uh, part of the UK. The, uh, I'm trying to think back. Was it southern part of the UK? They say croft. And I live in the southern part of the US, so I thought I could say croft too. But what have I been doing? What's out of my bags? Let's see. I have finished. Okay. I have finished my Matterhorn socks. I had not even started these, my last podcast, my last, my last show. I am hosting a year of stone knits. So that is the hashtag if you want to join along, a year of stone knits. And I am knitting, my goal is to knit one pair of Charlotte Stone, Charlotte of Stone Knits, her socks. I, my goal is to knit one pair per month. So I will have 12 beautiful pair of color work socks by the end of the year. I met Charlotte in Norway, fell in love with her, and I have knit two pair of her socks. I've done the mushrooms and I've done the dandelion because mushroom and dandelions are two of my just favorite things. So I knit those and neither one of them really fit me. So. I am not one to let something really get me. I'm going to conquer it. If if I think that a pattern thinks that I can't do it, or if I think you think I can't do it, that's going to motivate me to get it done. So I thought, what better way to ch than to challenge myself to make a pair of socks every month? And I finished my first one. These are called the Matterhorn Socks. And this is what they look like. This is not on here really pretty. These fit perfectly. Now, several things about this. Oh my gosh, those are gorgeous. I knit those with uh, Amy and Jen of Dandelion and Dogwood, I believe is the name of the yarn company. Th this was their yarn, this and this. So let me see this, see all the pretty speckles in that, that, and this is what I knit them with. Then I had this bluish color in my stash. So I am so in love with these fit perfectly. However, I will say I tried them on just about every round, definitely every round or two because I just didn't want 
I didn't want to be knitting and then get down to here and try them on and they not fit. Then I have to rip all that out. So I thought I'd rather take out two rows than I would rather take out 20 rows. And I did have to take out a couple rows every now and then. It would be like, oh, that's just too tight. The thing with, if you've never knit color work socks, the thing with is they have to go up over that heel. So they have to be loose enough to go over the heel, but yet not too loose that they fall down your leg. These are perfect. Oh my gosh, I'm just so thrilled that I did it. Now, not only did I do it, but I also taught myself how to knit with both hands. Okay, so, you know, with color work, you can knit with, with both yarns in one hand, or you can knit with each color in one hand. Well, what I was doing is I would knit, drop, pick up, knit, drop, pick up. And the problem with that is, number one, it's slow. And number two, sometimes my yarns would get twisted to where I wasn't, the dominant color was not always flowing the way it should. So now I know my dominant colors in my left hand, my other colors in my right hand, and I taught myself. Now, let me tell you, it wasn't pretty. I'm, I'm just going to say it wasn't pretty. The first few goes, first few hours maybe, the first few days could have been, that I'm right-handed, but I, I'm a continental knitter, typically. I could not get this right hand to knit. I, I just, it felt like I was, let, I was trying to do something. It felt like I was trying to write left-handed. I just couldn't do it. And the thing is, when I first started knitting, I knit with my right hand. So I couldn't, it was so frustrating to me why I could not pick that back up. But I was determined, and so I did it, and I did it. And finally, I got the, the, the I guess they say throwing. I really don't throw. I just kind of throw it with my, my hand, I, my finger, I guess. But anyway, I got the, the rhythm to it, and I was so slow at it. But at least I was making the mechanics of it. I was doing it. And so then I, I picked up speed, and to where now... My tension and the speed, I'm happy with. I mean, it's it's faster than 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 I'm what I was doing. Put it that way. Than than dropping, picking up, do, dropping and picking up. It's more consistent. My tension's better. I'm so happy that I stuck with that. So my tip to you is, if you are going to start color work socks and you've never color worked before, just go ahead and teach yourself how to do it with either two hands or holding both strands. I don't even know how they do it with one hand, um, but Google it, YouTube it, and just learn because it's so much easier to get it now. And it'll be slow, but you will be happy that you did it. Now, I've got January socks finished, and I am getting ready to do... Um, Charlotte just published a, a set of three. Let me see. I think I wrote down... Um, yeah, so she calls it the heart-shaped sock set on Ravelry or Etsy. It's the heart-shaped sock set. Heart-shaped sock set. Say that five times really fast. Um, and so there's three patterns in it. And let me tell you, it's so, I was expecting at least a bare minimum three sock patterns to be $15. Now, I was just, in my head, I thought, okay, 15 to 21, you've got three pa three patterns here. It's $7 for these three pair of socks. So I, of course, bought it and I am going to make, I'm getting ready to cast on the third one. And I thought, oh, here it is. The um, third one, it's called Good Friend Socks. And it's the socks that have hearts all, the whole thing is color work, like, you know, there, this has a break. There's no color work here. When this new set that I'm, this new one for February that I'm going to do, it's all color, color work and it's so pretty, but I'm going to do, um, my background is this. Now hers are pink and typically you would think in your mind, pink hearts, but I'm trying to work from stash. So I didn't have any pink that I thought would look right with this. So I'm going with chocolate hearts. So these, it's my my socks will be this. And this is just th blowing me away because this 
and this. You know, I'm a colorful girl. But I love these, and I know I will love these. It's funny because my sister, the one that I'm doing the crochet blanket for that I showed you in the last episode, and I said, she's not colorful like me. She said, when she saw these, she was like, oh, I could even wear those because <laughs> they're not real colorful. But, um, yeah, I am so thrilled with these. So, kudos to Charlotte for a great pattern. She is a great pattern writer, let me tell you. And she's very accessible. Uh, I mean, you just message her on Instagram and she's going to get right with you. I would say that she's probably the same with Ravelry or Etsy. Um, I just, I, my main way of contacting everybody is through Instagram. So, Matterhorn Socks. These are going to be the girlfriend was what a good friend socks, good friend socks coming up. So probably by the next time I podcast, these may be done at least one. No, let me tell you my little secret of why I never get second sock syndrome. You've heard of that before of where they get one sock done and then they just don't cast the other one on. My little tip for second sock syndrome is I knit them basically two at a time. Now, not two at a time on the same needle. I have done that before, but I don't do that any any longer. I, I don't, I feel like I'm not making progress. It's a much, I don't know. That's just not for me. I knit, like for instance, these. What I would do is I would knit, I think I knit the far, down to the first chart and then I stopped and then I, I picked up, the, I started this one and knit down to the front. And then I knit all of that, stopped, went back, knit all of this, stop. So I did that all the way down, you know. And that way, when I'm done, I'm done. It's because I know me, after I'd have done, because this is fun stuff here. So when I got all this fun stuff done, got done, got done, I, it, the fun would be over. And I'd be like, oh, I gotta do that again. And that to me is not fun. So I do, I just suction them. This section, this section, this section, this section. I'd bounce back and forth. Yes, I have two. I've got plenty of needles. So I think I did these on a 1.5. I can't remember. Whatever the pattern called for, that would be 1.5 US. Um, I need to learn the millimeter sizes, don't I? But anyway, that's not important because you're going to get your own gauge. That's how I, that is how I beat the second sock syndrome. I just... I knit my socks in stages. All right. Let me show you what else is out, out of my bags. I, I think I had these. I did. I had started these. These are the Both Ways socks by um, Jen of Everything Shapes Us. And these are a birthday present for my daughter. But um, here you go. Now, I will say this. In a basic sock like this, I don't do a little bit and then stop and do. Because this is this is just mindless knitting. So when it's mindless knitting, I don't get second sock syndrome. Don't ask me why. I don't know. I just don't. Man, I've got an itchy nose. But this pair of socks. Here I used um, the... It was Knit Picks. And I don't remember... It is in my last show notes, um, and I can put it in this show notes too, but this is Knit Picks, strung along actually with this um, base, and two strands held together, and then I had minis that I just did each, and voila, they are so warm because they are double-stranded. So, those are finished, and they're called Both Ways Socks because excuse me, you can wear them both ways. Like you can wear them, you can wear this inside out, I guess, is what you can wear. In, there's no right side. You can, either, either way you can wear them. I could have matched my stripes up, but yeah, no, I'm not that anal. You know, I'm a wabi-sabi kind of girl. That did not bother me at all. And I don't think it'll bother my daughter. Um, she's probably just going to wear them around the house anyway. So that's out of my bags. And that's all that I have out of my bags. That's all that I've finished. So I've been doing a lot of sock knitting. But I've also been doing a lot of other knitting. I've worked a little bit on the blanket that, um, the two blankets that I had going last, uh, I've, I've, um, I meant to bring my squares over here. Um, I remember me telling you that I was making just 
I was going to make some great big garter stitch squares for a blanket. And I know I had this color done. And I know I had, mm, did I have the navy done? And green, I had the green done. I think I had these three squares done. Then I did a pink one and I've done a red one and I'm doing a purple one now. So I'm going to just uh, keep making squares. I'm doing this because I'm looking at my sofa over here because it'll probably lay on the back of the sofa. But yeah, I'm just going to sew them all together and it'll just be a great big patchwork kind of quilt. So I've got what? One, two, three, four, five and a half. Five and a little, not quite a half. And it'll just be just a hodgepodge of colors together sewn. So I've been working on that. I've been working on the crochet blanket for my sister. And then I've also been working on, remember I told you about the um, Richmond Hill pullover that I'm doing as a birthday um, cast on with my friend St. Louis. Okay, this is how far I have gotten. So I think I was right here the, when I stopped, maybe not. Maybe it wasn't quite that far down, but that's it. Um, I have oh, quite a lot more to knit, but I am loving the color. This is, um, I don't think it's a color name. It's just a color number. It's, um, color 53139 of the Broco Ultra Wool Fine. So I'm doing it on a size five with fingering weight. It's the perfect fit. It's not, it's just very loose. And, um, and if you'll remember the sleeves will be color work sleeves. This must be the year of color work for me. Maybe that's why I felt the need to teach myself to, to knit with both hands, but yes, I'm loving this. Now I probably, I don't know. I might have to wear something under it anyway because it's kind of thin. You can see through that. Yeah, I'll definitely, if nothing else, I'll have to wear a cami under it. But I don't know if that will be too itchy against my, my skin or not. But I love that color. So that's in my bags. And remember, that's in my bag by Monique of Blueberry Fields. So I hope you went to Etsy and checked her out. Uh, and there's my little knitting pin from my friend in Barcelona. Now, what else is in my bags, you asked? I'm going to show you one more thing. Okay. These are uh, a test knit from my friend Marta. And um, it's her very first pattern that she's come up with. I absolutely love them. When I first saw them, they reminded me of um, something that Kristen Nicholas, and she is the one that I showed you, where I got Kind of picked up the idea for this um, this uh, blanket. Um, she has socks. Actually, I didn't even go to look up the pattern, but it just kind of made me think of some some slippers that I had made from her patterns before. And it also made me think of when we were in Norway. Marta, um, you go into homes, and they would have baskets by their doors of socks and slippers because you take your shoes off and you put those on. Guess, put those on. And I have one of those at my door because I just loved that uh, whole concept. It was such a cozy, huga, uh, kuslig, as they would say, vibe that um, I had to have, I just had to do that here. So by my door, I have a basket or a box and it's full of, of slippers and big thick socks and um so these socks kind of made me think of that Th so these that's you know i'm going to make some more of these to put in that but anyway it made me think of norway because i have a picture of marta uh wearing a pair of kind of funky ones i thought i had her in, in different ones but i'll put this one picture in here and pop it up um, because this was her at one of the homes, um, uh, Goon Ellen, if you are watching, um, 
This was your beautiful home. She served us beautiful soup and wonderful birch tea and just uh, a great afternoon at, there. But so anyway, these socks that Marta uh, wrote the pattern for, I knew immediately I have to test knit those for you. So I just started them. Let me see if I've got both of them here. I'll show you what I mean by about by um, my second sock syndrome and why I don't have it. Okay, so this is the cuff starting down. Aren't those cool? Okay, so she has different sections do different things. So it's going to be colorful. It's going to be fun. And see as you can, as you can see, here's the other one. So I've got one and two. Now I'm getting ready to start. This next section is going to be with this green. Let me pull it out. I'll use this next. And then, you know, each section you do. And th then when I get this done, I'll break it and pull this up and start, put the green to this. But it's going to be, oh, I'm having fun with this because this is my colorful self right here. And so keep an eye out. They're called Carnival in Venus. If you'll go to Marta's Instagram feed, um, and I'll put that in the show notes. It's Martushka Makes. But you'll get to see her finished socks. They are just so, so fun. But I'm working on that. Now, remember me telling you that Marta had sent me some yarn for Christmas. And so I put this blue up here was yarn that Marta dyed. And then I'm going to be, whoops, I'm going to be using her other minis in it. And then this first section, this is probably not stuff that you're interested in, but it's interesting to me because you're my friends and you've, you've, you've gifted me this stuff. So this first section up here was this blue from Marta. And then Tina, when you gifted me this, I added that in there too, because I just had to have that in my socks. It was so special. And I, when people give me things, I just, you know, I don't want to just throw them in a pile and then when I use them, I don't, it does, I'm too, um, too nostalgic. I, I'm just really, uh, I don't know, heartfelt to do that. I, I just, my knitting has to have meaning. And so like other, other things in here of, of this purple and this pink here were from, um, the advent swap that I did with Shelly. So, Shelly, yours is getting used as well. I've got the rest of your minis in here, so they will be going into this sock. So the rest will be my advents from um, Shelly and then Marta's mix socks. So it's going to be such a meaningful Carnival and Venus pair of socks for me. But they'll be fun just to wear around the yurt on these cold days. And they're warm because, you know, color work is warm because you're basically, it's double-stranded. So... Yeah, now, I will say this. I got a little carried away on this and really wasn't thinking, oh, this is color work, basically. You're, you're you know, you're, you've got two strands of yarn there and it's a little tight, but I can get it over the heel comfortable enough. It's not a, it's not a real struggle. So, I didn't rip that out because I didn't think to try it on until I got a couple rows into this color work because I'm thinking this color work can't be too tight. I should have been a little looser on the one by one up here. But it's okay. It, it goes over the heel without tugging. It's just eh, a little caught. You know, you just have to be a little careful, but it's okay. So, yeah. So, in order for me not to get second sock syndrome, I will just match them up as I go down. So, hopefully these will be finished too before I'll podcast again. Oh, my goodness. Just keep following me on Instagram because you will definitely see. Uh, I haven't posted these yet because I don't feel like there's really enough. Although, I was walking. Um, I posted a photo in my stories and on my feed of me walking and knitting. And this is, this is the pattern I was working on. Cause I could do that because I had one skein of, uh, one ball of yarn in this pocket and one ball of yarn in this pocket. So that, and now that I can double, I can knit with both hands, I could walk and knit cause it was real simple. So that, and that is in my bag. It's my piece. I call it my piece bag. It's by button jar studio. And, um, Julie, I don't know what you call this bag, but I call it my piece bag. I have two sizes of this, and I absolutely love it. Let me tell you, I'm going to put her in my show notes as well. Her bags are superb, and I would have a gazillion of them. 
if I felt like I could. There's another one that's bigger than this. It's the piece bag, and I would like to have it, but I think I probably shouldn't. Um, if I do get another one, I should probably get a, if I get one of the big sizes, I should get a different print. But look at the inside. Isn't that gorgeous? That print. She has a knack for picking out fabrics. And then the pockets are this fabric. Another well-made bag maker. I love that. So that's Button Jar Studio. Okay. So that is what's in my bag. All right, so I've done out of my bags, I've done in my bags. It's time. What do you say we go to book bag? All right, I am reading. First, I'll tell you, I am listening as I walk to uh, a book by um, Ariana Huffington. It's called Thrive, and it is so good. It is um, about meditation and you know, just being present and in the moment of when you're doing things and what a healing and cleansing that is for your body is really, really, really good. And I wouldn't know, I would not have, I don't even remember how I came across this book. I don't know if someone suggested it to me because it's been in my Audible for a while and I'm really, really loving it. Now, she, um, you know, she spans all doctrines, all faiths, all non-faiths. Um, so that's not everyone's tup tup of key. <laughs> and if that's not your tup of key, then you don't want to listen to it. <laughs> Maybe I've been talking too long. If that's not your cup of tea, then you may not want to listen to her. I like to listen to different opinions. Um, just because you're not of my faith or my belief doesn't mean I can't learn from you. I would hope for the same. I mean, I like open conversation. I don't like shutting people down. My husband always likes to say people who shut you down don't really believe what they say they believe because they don't want to be challenged by any other thought process. They just don't mess with my thought process. It's so fragile, it'll break if I do. And it kind of makes sense because I believe what I believe, but I'm not dumb enough to think that I'm the I've got everything right. I'm getting on a tangent. Anyway, I just want to put that disclaimer out there because some people would not like that. I love it. And so I'm really enjoying that on my walks. Plus, the um, I looked up who was, who was reading it. And her name was this long. And I wasn't even going to attempt to try it. But she sounds like my friend Marta. And so when I'm listening... It's like Marta's there just talking with me and we're walking and having fun. And so I love it. But that's what I'm listening. That's what I'm listening to. Now, what I'm reading is I just picked this up and it's called The Enchanted April. It's a classic. I'd never heard of it. This lady, um, Elizabeth Von Arnhem. She, I read her. The first few pages are about her and her life. Oh, my gosh. What an interesting life this lady has read as led. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this. I'm only on like chapter three and, um, it's set back in the early 1900s and it's about, um, these women who are, um, just kind of bored with life and this castle along the Mediterranean comes up for rent for a month. And so they are going together, putting their money together and renting it for the month of April. And that's as far into it as I am. So it's interesting. I, I'm, it's been in my to be read for a while. I don't even know where I got it. Probably a Barnes and Noble and a cheapy pile. But, um, so the Enchanted April, that's what I'm reading. That's all that's in my book bags. Um, what else am I doing? I'm making a quilt for my daughter. Oh, let me go. So as you know, my daughter is getting married. And so I wanted to make her a quilt. So I've got this quilt book. Uh, it's called, I love Jane Brockett. I love all things Jane Brockett, but this is the, the art of quilt making. Is that the art of quilt? The gentle art of quilt making by Jane Brockett. She's got some beautiful quilts in here. So I'm making her this quilt right here. 
And these are my fabrics. I've at least got the fabrics pulled finally. I, I love quilting, but I do not like pulling fabrics. I don't like pulling fabrics and I don't like prepping them, like ironing them. Once I get that done, I also don't like cutting it out. <laughs> once I get that done, once I get the fabrics pulled, get them, you know, pressed and uh, pressed and ironed, pressed and ironed are the same thing, washed and ironed and cut out. I love quilting. <laughs> But these are, let me see, these are the ones that I, these are the fabrics that I pulled. And then this is going to be the backing. So, hopefully, I will get on that soon. Well, you know what? I'm leaving for a week, so probably not happening. Probably won't be much done by the time I record again. But then, Katie bar the door. I also have to. I also have back orders. I have a bag that I have to make when I get back for a friend down in um, Texas. I have two pair of socks. No, I have more than that. I've got my list of socks. I've got more than that that have to be made for people. <sighs> I've got to get this. She's getting married in May. I really wanted to have this done by March or April. Um, that way I just don't have any stress. It, this quilt is going to be so fast, though. I mean, it's not going to be hard at all. So I will get that done. I have this week. I might get something done. <gasps> I watch podcasters when they have a buddy. It's so easy. When I record with my sister, oh, that's so fun. I love that. That makes, that makes, if I had, I wish Sharon lived up here on this mountain and then we would record every week because it was, it's so much fun to record with someone else, especially when it's someone you love as much as I love her. But it's so hard to do it when you do it by yourself. There's no one to bounce anything off of and you might think something's funny and the people on, you guys might think, that, well, that's stupid. It's just, ugh. but you got to work with what you've got, right? I'm going to get off of here and I'm going to start editing and I'm going to take a walk. Todd's doing dinner tonight, so I don't have to do that. When we there for the longest time, he did dinner all the time. And that was so nice. And at some point, it got switched over to like 50-50. Gotta do something about that, huh? <laughs> no, I don't mind cooking. It's just the two of us, so it's not like it's that big of a mess. I cook, I am the neat cook. Like I'll cook and I'll clean and I'll cook and I'll clean so that when I'm done, like when, when my dish goes in the oven or whatever, crock pot stove I'm things are washed and done as I go along he on the other hand when he cooks it looks like a bomb went off and our rule is typically whoever cooks the other cleans up so I'd almost rather cook than clean up after his mess but he is a good cook let me tell you but tonight he's cooking I think we're having hamburger steak and french fries and he makes some really good homemade french fries. So that'll be nice. So, I don't have to cook dinner. So I can record, I can edit, I can walk, I do a little bit of laundry, and knit. And dream about my week in Charlotte with my grandies. I will take lots of pictures so that you all can enjoy them with me. Um, get to see my mama. It's just going to be nice. I think their weather is going to be nice. And, uh, so keep on crafting, keep on making and in everything you do, take it one stitch at a time. I'm out walking, thought I'd bring you along. Have my 
still have my iced coffee. And I'm glad I put these little mitts on. These are the um, <sighs> Sweet November mitts by um, Jen of Everything Makes Us. So at least they're keeping my hands a little warm. And uh, I see. Oh, I just I have hand knit socks on, my sweater, and these. So three handmade items. That's not too bad. Usually I have a hat or a scarf. I almost put a shawl on, but it's really nice out here today. So this is me out in the woods looking for mushrooms. I'm not actually in the woods. I'm just walking along the road and uh, looking for those mushrooms. So if I see anything, sometimes I see birds that are flying. A lot of times I see red bird and it makes me think of my dad, it makes me think of my dad or my grandma's walking with me. And, uh, so they're kind of hard to take pictures of, but if I see anything, I'll take pictures and share my mushrooms that I find along my path.